Just heading over to check on the bees. It's been uh, in the low minus 40s to mid uh, to high minus 30s. Uh, today it's minus 30, still snowing. All my trails are, are gone, so I threw on the snowshoes to head out to the bees and just grab my data. Uh, yeah, and do a bit of exercise because I've been uh, housebound because of the cold for the last uh, few days. Interesting separation there. There's almost an inch and a half gap behind the wall here and the snow. So I packed all the snow down. So, like I said, it has been, uh, I think the coldest was close to minus 47, 48. Uh, so the bees were probably in a very high uh, meta zone. So metabolic uh, honey consumption was probably really hot or high just trying to keep warm as a cluster. So hence generating more heat, releasing more, and pretty much melting the snow off the back here. So I'll just pack it back in to cover that, but uh, that's what that is. So I'll just have a quick look for dead bees. So right now, so I'm not gonna disturb them because it's still minus 30 out, but uh, I don't see any fallen bees. Entrances are probably frozen up. So we'll, uh, I'll check that later. Life in the Yukon. I guess it's about minus 30 right now. I'm gonna actually have to start uh, chopping some extra firewood, which is located underneath this uh, these snow banks. Uh, just so you know, for you beekeepers out there, there's a uh, direct correlation between uh, honey consumption and uh, basically your your house's heating bill. So if you keep track of how much energy you use to heat your house, uh, over time you'll get a trend. And you can link that up to uh, how cold it is. And then if you understand your, your bees and how much they consume their honey and stuff, so you'll be able to, to find some, uh, some relationships there. So typically, here's my woodshed. Uh, I would have uh, probably, a, a, probably a row more of firewood than uh, what's left in there. Uh, I've got enough for about a probably a month, month and a half, but I'll need to chop some more. But uh, typically uh, where the mittens are there, so the firewood started there and I fill the back end. Uh, there's about four or five cords in there. But uh, yeah, how much uh, energy you use to heat your house and how much energy your bees need to, to stay warm over winter, uh, there's a connection there. So uh, all available info is uh, really valuable. Cheers. I guess my videos wouldn't be videos without a couple of charts. So uh, here's my weather uh, station uh, data. This blue dotted, dotted line here is the uh, the low temperature, and this uh, solid blue line here is the daily high. Uh, you can see early January is when they really dipped into the really, really cold weather. So it was in the minus 30s, let's say just above minus 30 for most of uh, New Year's, and then it dropped. Uh, I think we had a low here on a physical thermometer of about like minus 44. I think we had 47, 47, and then another 44. And now it's gone up, so we're at uh, maybe minus 14 now. So uh, that's nice and comfy. It actually feels warm because it's uh, 30 degrees warmer than it was uh, a few days ago. Uh, I'll go out and clean some entrances tomorrow when I start cutting some firewood. Uh, but that's that. So let's have a look at the hive temperatures. So this first one here is the control. So you can see where we had a really, really cold. Uh, the internal temperatures in the control hive with no bees was actually around minus 20. So uh, you can see how that thermal lag there really helps. So as it drops, having lots of honey in there, so there's about 50 pounds of, of probably 80% capped honey in there. 
and that's just the, the thermal resistance of that honey. It holding heat and energy and re slowly releasing it, that's the buffer that the bees have. So if you don't have any honey, you lose out on that, and then you get really crazy dips. So the bees have to make up all that, that heat energy. First one here, this is the non-slatted rack single colony. <clears throat> You'll see some spikes on some of these sensors just because it's so cold. Uh, we'll get uh, some, uh, some spikes because uh, sensors don't like extreme cold. You'll notice the choppiness on here, so it's kind of crazy. Uh, the purple line is actually the front of the hive and that baby blue line, the second line on top, that's the center sensor. So you can see as it got colder, the bees shifted from being in the front of the colony to more the center. And uh, basically it's, usually they tend to, to favor 18, 19 degrees Celsius, but uh, I guess with the cold, they probably clustered really tight. Uh, and these uh, lines here below, so those lines here are the sensors below the cluster. And you can see the about minus six at the coldest, uh, or actually this is just on the outside. And these sensors here, this is actually the temperature below the cluster. So you can see that it's still minus 30 below the cluster, so pretty damn tight. And these high spikes here in the red one, so that's them generating heat to stay warm within the cluster. Oh. So now we'll get to the colony with the slatted rack. Uh, so you'll notice that there's a nice big heat spike here and there's a general trend up uh, because the slatted rack seems to be able to help keep the the, the atmosphere, the air inside that colony from moving too much. So you'll see that the, the, the temperature actually increases above 20. And the overall, there is a less spikiness than the, uh, the non-slatted rack. So it probably just tells me that there's fewer heating events. And these drops in sensors here is just at temperatures below minus 45, they stop working because that's the minimum, because they go, they start giving an error. So hence the reason that they drop like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, because the temperature below the slatted rack uh, is typically higher than the one without, but when it gets really, really cold, the cluster above prevents any heat from going, and then so these sensors actually start dropping below uh, safe limits. And uh, it's when they get oversaturated and too cold, the battery just stops working. Uh, and the last one, uh, this one here is just a, a double. I have one sensor, I think, in the top box. So you can see the bees are still in the top box or in the lower box. They haven't moved up yet. And it's a steady seven degrees throughout the cold. So this is a zone where the sensor is, is where the cluster isn't. Uh, but in a nutshell, that's that. So yeah, so I'd recommend uh, for folks who can, uh, if you want to measure and understand how much work your bee do or does or as a group do, then it's important to have uh, some type of control colony, just so you can see and make a comparison between uh, a monitored colony and then basically uh, the enclosure versus a an enclosure with bees and without. And that's what the control is for. Thanks.